Today in acrylic mediums part 5 we'll be using acrylic mediums in our art journals. Hi I'm Darren from Art by Darren welcoming you to another Art Start mixed media art class. Today we'll be using the new Art Start free color collage papers and the links in the description below if you'd like to download those and use them with me to make this page. We'll be using this one this blue one. Oops looks like I've already started. So I've taken some white gesso and here I'm just putting some deli paper behind the page so that my pages don't stick together and I'm using a palette, plastic palette knife there to scrape the gesso on really thinly. If you only use a small amount and keep scraping then the page can nearly be dry as soon as you're finished. So I'm using the moulding paste and my, um, I forgot the name of it, here we go, duality stencil which is just some half circles and you can see I'm putting a very thin layer on it's only as thick as the stencil probably see it now when it's lying down you can see that's a very thin layer and I'm just using the smaller circles and putting that sort of all over as well the reason I um, started this page today was it was I'd watch some of those uh, what are they called Karens on the, on the internet I just thought, oh my goodness, why are people so horrible? So that was the inspiration for this page. And I've just gone in here and put some fluid acrylic. It's just an Australian sky blue. And I spread that out with an old key card. Now I'm just using the blue and dotty paper. And all those papers are free actually and you just um, download them and you can print them uh, straight off your printer and that's what I've done here. I just printed them on my printer and I've got as many as I want then. Now I've added a little bit of ultramarine blue here and I was just trying to get that definition in the um, circles to stand out. I also put a heart on there as well because it's just my thinking. We should stop being uh, du du having that duality. That um, you know, if we spoke from our hearts and came from our hearts, and had a transformed our talking, actually, we would all be better people. So that's why the one heart's there. Now I've got the same paper in a large print. And so I'm just putting that on for a bit of um, contrast as well. It's got black in it there a little bit more. I've put some uh, black fluid acrylic here on with a palette knife. It didn't go particularly well, so I grabbed a sponge and then my stencil. And that's a really good trick for using your stencils if you want to get accurate edges. It's just put it over where you've put your moulding paste before and then pounce through with uh, the sponge and you'll be able to get that color on easily then I've grabbed a baby wipe and wiped off some of the blue to expose that white underneath and then grab some white fluid acrylic or oh, sorry just some gesso actually and pounce that through there as well so taking us to blow pencil we'll start sketching out our face now the face is divided up in two different sections. You've got the eyes are in the middle of the head and everything runs off this central axis. So what I've got is this uh, app that I use called Pose Tool 3D. I wish I'd used it before I started drawing this but I found it afterwards. I thought it'd be useful for you. Uh, this app it, it allows you to do life drawing so I've just got a picture of the head here but you can actually do a whole life drawing of a male or a female body, thin, fat, muscular, young, old. Um, they've only got male and female. Oh, sorry, they don't do non-binary. But you can uh, do different lighting techniques for this as well and use it to help with your drawing. So if we map out the face, first of all we need, and the head, First of all, we need to work out where the light's coming from. And so you can see the light's hitting the top of our head and the side of the face. 
then we can map out where the eyes are. Usually if we start with the eyes because they're halfway down the head. This is uh, one thing most people get wrong because they put the eyes in the wrong position. It's from the top of the head to the bottom of the chin, halfway in between there. And that's where the eyes are positioned. And then the nose is halfway between the middle of the eyes and the chin, and the mouth is halfway between the chin and the nose. And if you look on that there as well, you can see that the ear lines up with the eye and the bottom of the nose is the bottom of the ear. So if we apply that to our art journal page now, we can map out where the eyes are, halfway down the head and the nose, halfway between the chin and the eyes and the lips halfway between that. Now you can see I'm just putting a very loose outline at this stage. I've done my measurements and I'm just going to wet my stabilo which is going to give me some instant shading which is fabulous. Now I've decided here, you can see where that black mark is on the nose there from that circle. Because of that there I'm going to put some paint over that. Um, sometimes you can just leave the face as an outline like that but here I'm going to start giving it a little bit more structure. And just to cover up that uh, the markings there because they just didn't quite land right with the face so you can see when you put white gesso on over the face there that it creates this mid-tone gray and that's fine this is the first layer and we'll let that dry you can see putting that white in the eye there and that little highlight gives us that really bright real looking eye putting some eyebrow uh, highlights here um, on the next layer up uh, you can see anywhere that uh, sticks out on the head is going to have that highlight so the nose the eyebrow about eyebrows the lips uh, the cheekbones and the chin now putting some hair on I measured up you saw I measured up from my eyes to the top of my head there as well just to draw in some loose hair Using that black from the stibulo, I've started to put some shading in around the eyes there. And remember, the eyes are in a hollow of the head, so you want to put some darkness in there. Uh, and that'll give you some structure as well. Putting that highlight on the cheekbones there. And just tidying up my edges. Going in with the stibulo pencil to redefine my shapes again. And then we I decided on putting a stamp. I use... Um, the butterflies a lot uh, to represent transformation and I figure Karen's could really do with the transformation of, of their speech so I've carved this little uh, oh God, what's it called it's a butterfly and I'll put on a scrap bit of paper here a bit of scrap of watercolor paper that I use for something else because I only need that little square there and I'm going to cut that out and stick that on her face. So here's the other page that I've done before. And there I had transformation of thinking was my thing now. So you can see you could have transformation of, of what you see, how you see things, how you think, what you listen to, how you feel. You could place that butterfly anywhere to get that transformation or focus on that transformation. So I'm going to put it right over her mouth. I didn't think till afterwards that it does look a bit Silence of the Lambs, but we're not going for that. It's more about transformation of speech here. And I'm just going to glue that down with a, a bit of um, matte medium. So I thought I'd bring that colour over as well to the heart, just so that you've really got that connection between the two things. Uh, so between the, the speech and the heart, that's really where I wanted that connection there. And I will put a couple of coats of that orange on uh, because that blue is showing through a bit there. I don't know if you noticed, I put a bit of white gesso in with that paint when I made it so that it would be more opaque. So make it easier to paint over that blue with the orange. So now I've just started using the matte medium to go over the top and spread out my stipulo pencil some more to give me some more uh, darks. So 
so you can see I've made her look quite old now by giving her those um, dark areas around her eyes I've given her some uh, strength in the cheekbones by going in underneath the cheekbones and going down the side of the nose now I'm looking at the side of the nose there she's got a bit of a big nose now but I will fix that a bit later on so just bringing that orange paint over there again onto the butterfly and getting some more gesso out to go and put some more highlights in again so just making the eyes a little bit bigger and bring that highlight back into the eyes on the top of the eyebrow on the nose on the forehead under the eyes look whoop she's young again <laughs> got rid of those wrinkles but you can see I've still left a bit of that definition under the eye Put a little bit of highlight in the hair on top of the ear on the neck and the chin and around our heart as well I just brought that uh, circle back again the half circle with the white just touching that up in a few places <clears throat> trying it on the face just trying to bring a little bit of that back into the head again just to see what it looks like it's fine to sort of go through the hair with it um, and then I decide to bring back the other large half circle try it out in the middle of the nose yeah, it looks a bit odd it looks a bit odd on the face as well really start to bring that highlight she's really got a big nose now that you see what I did there so I'm gonna have to bring that stipulo pencil back in and I can actually carve away at her nose and you'll see I'm just putting that oh, there's a little bit of white on that butterfly there as well I've gone around the butterfly but I'll carve into the side of her nose in a minute and um, give her a nicer shaped nose so there you go she's gonna have a little upturned nose now so you can see just by going down and changing that dark how it really changes the shape of the face just by putting a, a dark section down the side of the nose you can see now she's got a little upturned nose it's still a bit big down the bottom but that's okay again going in with the matte medium to try and seal that in a bit it's really hard to seal your stabilo pencil it, it stays uh, fluid <laughs> In water and it moves around a lot and you'll always there'll always be a spot where you've missed it now I'm writing out my saying for this title uh, for this page which is if we are all one why are we so mad at ourselves I thought of this the other day and I thought yeah come on we're all supposed to be one people what's going on so I'm using my white gel pen here just to put a few highlights in uh, going around the circles as well just to bring them out and using my black food ball pen to put a few of the details in as well and I'm just going to go around my letters really simple way of doing lettering just write your normal letters out and then go around uh, and uh, go around the edges of those to create a, a, a thicker letter uh, on the inside there I've just put a little bit of white and crossed it in center and then I've gone around and put a shadow in so everywhere on the right side and underneath I've made a thick line there just to get that stand out a little bit more and of course before, when I started this I actually put it on in pencil so I could sort of map out where I needed to put it all um, and just be careful that gel liner can rub off on your uh, acrylic uh, being over the acrylic so just be careful that's what I showed you there so I realized that my eyes were way different size now I could have made one this one on the right smaller but I decided to make the one on the left bigger so she's got really big eyes and that's okay that's what she looks like she's a little weird looking but that's okay the more it was teaching you about where things go and teaching you about shading in this and I really wanted to exaggerate it so you could really see the definition that you get from putting your lights and your darks in 
so just touching that eye up I also moved the eyeball over a little the pupil over a little bit it was kind of in the wrong spots to make it look like she was sort of looking over my left shoulder then I realized as well I mean I hadn't seen it until I started editing actually that the uh, shadow that I had on her left side of her face um, it needed to well her right side but our left side um, that shadow needed to come on her forehead as well and so I just put that in you can see that running down her face now and put a few more highlights in and just started fiddling way too much but I really didn't want to redraw the whole thing because if you measure it out you can see on the screen her eye, her chin should be about another inch or you know, a few centimeters further down to make that whole face balanced um, if we go by our measurements from the top of our head to the bottom of our chin to balance that face that chin should be a bit further down but you can see I'm just putting those highlights in in a few places where you would have them smudging it on the left side of the face so that they're not as pronounced as on the right side of the face but that cheekbone would still be a little bit brighter it would still be a little bit more light on that side of the, the face and underneath the, the eye socket there and the top of the nose and the top of the eye there so here I come I'm fiddling again look I've got a pencil out oh where, are we? where can I put some pencil eh, there's nowhere okay I'm gonna leave it there today I hope you've enjoyed that class please give it a like and a thumbs up and I'll see you next time with another art start mixed media art class thanks for watching bye for now